One of the coolest applications of Newton's third law of motion is that of rocket propulsion. Rockets move because they eject matter out the back of their engines. Typically, this force is created when some type of fuel is ignited and produces a hot gas that exits the engine at a very high rate of speed. Now remember that momentum depends not only on velocity, but also mass. So the fuel causes a change in velocity, and at the same time, the rocket loses mass as the fuel is consumed. This causes a further change in momentum. Up until now, we've dealt with a constant mass, but now we're going to allow the mass of our system to change along with our velocity. A key idea here is that momentum is a result of the mass and the velocity of the gas, or the exhaust, being expelled from the engine. Remember that the change in momentum is also dependent upon the impulse, or the force that is applied over a certain amount of time. If it is the force that we are really concerned with, we can combine those terms in order to derive an expression we can use to describe it. What we find is that the force on the rocket is a function of the velocity times how fast the mass of the gas is being ejected. This is what we mean when we talk about the thrust force. Now something else we want to consider when talking about the propulsion of a rocket is its acceleration, which we have known for a while to be the force divided by the mass. We can substitute in our new expression for the force of the expelled gases, and we get something like this. This tells us that a rocket's acceleration depends on three things. First is the exhaust velocity of the rocket. The faster material is ejected from the engine, the greater the acceleration. Second is how fast the mass of the rocket changes. So the faster a rocket can burn its fuel, the more it can accelerate. Finally, the total mass of the rocket affects the acceleration. It stands to reason that the smaller a rocket's mass, the faster it can accelerate. So we now know that the acceleration of a rocket is dependent upon those variables. If we were in a situation where gravity was not acting on the rocket, that would be all we need to consider. However, the hard part here is that in order for a rocket to leave Earth, we have to more or less run out of Earth's gravity. So we have to take into account the fact that gravity is acting to pull the rocket downward while the expulsion of gases is pushing it upward. The good news here is that because this is a case of Newton's third law, and if the forces are acting in opposite directions, then the net force is the difference between them. So all we have to do here is subtract the acceleration due to gravity to find the overall acceleration of the rocket. So Saturn V's mass at liftoff was 2.8 times 10 to the 6th kilograms. Its fuel burn rate was 1.0 times 10 to the 4th kilograms per second, and the exhaust velocity was 2.4 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second. We want to calculate its initial acceleration. Now we're working with some pretty big numbers. The Saturn V's were actually what was used in the Apollo missions, so it stands to reason that those numbers would be pretty large. We're actually given the burn rate of the gas, so that takes care of our change in mass over change in time. We also know that the exhaust velocity and the mass of the rocket. Of course, g is 9.8 meters per second per second. And if we plug all of those in, we find the acceleration of the rocket to be 2.2 meters per second squared. 